Question number six from practice paper C, Pure Mathematics 2. This is the first page, part A. Okay, so here it says figure two shows a sketch of the curve with equation y equals the square root of x. Um, x must be greater than or equal to zero, otherwise we undefined. And um, it says the region R, okay, uh, which is shown shaded in figure two, is bounded by the curve and the line with equation x equals 1, the x-axis, and the line with equation x equals a. That's supposed to say equals a. It's a very bad print here. It came out quite bad, didn't it? That's supposed to say equals. x equals a. Where a is a constant. Okay, given that the area of r is 10. So we know the area of r is 10 units. All of this is 10 units, the area. Okay, find in its simplest form the value of the square root of 8 uh, times x between 1 and 8. Okay, so basically this is like, um, this can be rewritten as the integral between um, 1 and a and 1 of the square root of 8 times the square root of x dx and any constant uh, like the square root of 8 can be written outside of the integral. Okay, so this can be written as the square root of 8 times the square root of x dx. Okay, it can be written like that. Um, just like if I have the integral of 2x with respect to x, I can write that as 2 times the integral of x dx. It will give me the same answer. It will give me exactly the same answer. So the square root of 8 um, times x all under the square root can be split up into two separate sets. The square root of 8 times root x, okay, um, and you can take the square root of x outside of this. And I know that this uh, area, okay, this area is basically the, the area here is equal to 10. And it's equal to the integral between um, a and 1, sorry, between a and 1 of the square root of x dx, which is exactly this. So this is basically the square root of 8 times 10. Okay, we've got to give it in its simplest form. So that's going to be 10 times the square root of 8. Now, that's not in the simplest form because there's a third in there. That's like root 4 times root 2. So you end up with 2 times 10. So you've got 20 times root 2 is the answer to that question. Okay, because we know that this is equal to... 10, so it's root 8 times 10. That's part 1. Okay, um, part 2 is on the next page, I think. Yes. Okay, so for part 2, um, it says, find in its simplest form. So I've just redrawn the diagram here so we can see what's going. Um, find in its simplest form the value of the integral between a and 0 of root x. Okay, so now we've got to find the area from here all the way across. Okay, so I know this part has an area of 10. So what I need to do is to find the area of this part over here. Okay, this part over here. Whoops, make it thinner. So I need to find the area of this part over here. Okay, and add it to 10. So basically, sorry, that's my little boy Yusuf there making noise. <clears throat> okay, so now what we have is this is going to be the integral between 1 and a of root x dx okay which is 10 okay we know that that area is 10 okay plus the integral between 0 and 1 of the square root of x dx okay so basically it's going to be 10 plus the integral now let's get this ready for integrating x to the power half dx so that's 10 plus uh, that's x to the power of 3 over 2 divided by 3 over 2 which means multiplied by 2 over 3 between 0 and 1 so you got 10 plus and this is going to be 2 thirds basically because 1 put into there We'll give you just one, so two thirds times one and zero put into zero. So the answer is 10 and two thirds. That's the answer for part.
Okay, so part B, show that A is equal to 2 to the power of K. So let's have a look. We just shown that the square root, sorry, the integral of 0 of um, the square root of X with respect to X between 0 and A is equal to 10 and 2 thirds. So let's use that to help us work out what A is going to be. We have 0 and A and we have X, the square root of X dx is equal to 10 and 2 thirds, which is 32 over 3. Even the form might be easier for us to deal with. Uh, we've got to show that a is equal to 2 to the power of something, and we've got to find what k is. All right, so now when we integrate this, we know that we're going to get, uh, we already did it up here, we get 2 thirds x to the power of 3 over 2. So you have 2 thirds x to the power of um, 3 over 2, and you got limits of a and 0 and we know that's equal to 32 over 3 so we can substitute a into there and 0 into there if you substitute a into there you get 2 thirds times a to the power of 3 over 2 that's a minus 0 equals 32 over 3 so we can multiply both sides we can multiply both sides by 3 so you got 2 a to the power of 3 over 2 equals 32 we can divide both sides by 2 We've got a to the power of 3 over 2 is equal to 16 and we want to express it in terms of 2 to the power of something so we can rewrite 16 as 2 to the power of 4 right and i want to uh, have a equals so i want to get rid of this 3 to the power of 2 so i can raise this to the power of 2 thirds it will just cancel out because you multiply the powers if you multiply if you raise it to the power of the reciprocal they multiply and it gives you a to the power of one but if i raise this to the power of two thirds i must raise this to the power of two thirds also and four times two thirds is eight over three so a is equal to two to the power of eight over three therefore k is equal to eight over three which is a rational constant so there we have the answer to that question